Oh, how the tides have turned for Bass Elite Angler, Jacob Fouts. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family. And let me say again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all the people who are new subscribers that are commenting constantly. Uh, that was hard to say there that are being part of the team that are interacting on the YouTube channel. And thank you. But if you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button and become part of the team and family. Jacob Fouts has went from the bottom of the barrel to the top of the class this year in 2024. And Jacob Fouts has been very open and honest in his fight to become or to stay as an elite angler. And there's a lot of anglers that have busted his chops, have talked smack about him. And unfortunately, a lot of those anglers aren't even an elite angler. They're down in the, the lower tiers and probably couldn't make the elites. But when everyone has an opinion and they have a YouTube channel, smack talk happens. Now let's talk about Jacob to start off a little background. Jacob's been an elite angler for three years. He actually started fishing professionally in 2018. And this year he's made the top 50 in every tournament leading up to this tournament today. And I'm doing this while they're fishing Lake Champlain, where he has a, a real good chance of putting him in contention to win $100,000 in Angler of the Year. Now, in his three years of fishing, he's actually cashed 28 of 46 times for a total of $274,688,000 over his career since 2018. And at the end of 2022 and the start of 2023, it was horrible. He had an 89th, and I think it's called Lake Oha. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. 89th. Then he had an 88th, an 89th, the 60th, the 68th, the 72, a 72, and a 100th place, place finish over those eight tournaments. And that doesn't help make any money or make your sponsors happy. And Jacob has been very honest about making videos telling about his plight or his how he's doing financially on YouTube. He's one of the most honest people talking about what it takes to be a professional angler. He does breakdowns on what it costs to be a professional angler. He does some things that I wouldn't do about how forward-facing sonar is almost like cheating. And while the breakdown videos are really good because you get to see the honesty and the integrity behind Jacob and what it really costs to be a professional angler when I would say if you're doing videos that call forward-facing sonar cheating, I'm not sure that some of those sponsors or electronic technology sponsors would be happy about it, but that's neither here nor there. And Jacob has put it all out there, his financial stuff, his sponsor stuff, and he has a really amazing opportunity to do something fantastic. It isn't just winning Angler of the Year, but where he was a year and a half ago to where he is right now is been exceptional and amazing to watch. And I'm going to keep it real honest. During some of those videos, I know of several sponsors that talk to me or media people that talk to me and said, I think Jacob is canceling himself. And I just thought, I don't know if he's canceling himself because I really enjoy the honesty that he has behind what he's doing. But I can understand he's the only one that's ever done it. And a lot of people don't like the truth behind it. There's always this face between reality and what is truth. And there are way too many people, because we're fishermen, that have no truth in anything that they say. Now, this isn't all anglers, because I know lots of anglers that I believe every word that they say. But there's a handful of bad apples that just want to be vocal, want to be very negative, and just talk crap. And those anglers are probably the anglers I would say you shouldn't be listening to or listening, not only listening to, but believing what they say, because there's always two sides to every story. And I would say this directly to Jacob. While I think it's great to be open and honest and share your life, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But unfortunately, what goes online stays online. So I'm just going to give you an example. Recently, I had a company that I do a lot of work for contact me and say, hey, look, what do you think of this angler? And I said, well, I think he's decent. Now, this is not Jacob. I'm not talking about Jacob here. I want to make that very clear. This is not Jacob. And I said, I think he's okay as an angler. I don't think he's great, 
But what is he asking for? And they said, well, he's asking from this, from this company, and this from our other company, and some other stuff. And I said, well, the problem with being honest and open online is that you, at times, will say things that might you might not regret right then, but you can regret later on. And we're all guilty of this. And I said to this company, I said, I don't think, I think it's your decision to make up it's your decision to make up if you want to sponsor this guy. Don't listen to what I say. But my two cents is, if the angler is going to bash this person or this business or this organization, why would you sponsor him? When something goes bad or something doesn't work out in his favor and your business partners, who's saying that he isn't going to go after your business? I would say that directly to Jacob. Because I know in one of the videos I watched recently, he talked about Where's Ben Milliken and stuff like that. And the problem with that, what he's saying there is one of his sponsors is Waterland. And Waterland is owned under the umbrella of Sixth Sense. And we all know Ben is a big person on Sixth Sense fishing, if not one of the owners. So while I understand calling out the people who've called you out, I think sometimes you have to tone it back. In almost every video, I have to tone it back. That's the God's honest truth. If I could be honest about the things that are said and done, to myself, I would I would absolutely annihilate people, but I don't think that works. I don't think that's the right way to do business. I'm not here to hurt someone's business. I'm here to be as honest and open and give you my opinion as, as I see it. And if I'm wrong, I'm gonna be wrong. That's why I love the comments because you guys comment. But I would say to Jacob, sometimes you need to hold back. And I really hope Jacob finishes the year off right, because I think it's like a Cinderella story for Jacob. I think it's amazing that he went from where he was and the problems that he was having to now being Angler of the Year, and it shows how good of an angler he is. And it isn't just about catching fish. That's the most important thing that needs to be said in all the videos that anglers are doing. You can go out there and smash fish, but it doesn't mean that the sponsors are going to come to you. That's what anglers don't realize, what young anglers don't realize. You need to be able to catch fish, but you need to do all the other things that make you a sponsor level angler. And while most anglers are not going to want to acknowledge this, but the whining and crying goes on by a lot of them. And Jacob says that in his videos, these guys are whining and crying over my stuff. Unfortunately, it's happening at the highest level and at the lowest level. The people who have integrity are the ones that aren't crying about their neighbor or aren't trying to bust someone's chops. All they're trying to do is make themselves better. And they need to look inward when people do that. If you have to completely demolish an angler because they're kicking your ass, well then, maybe you shouldn't be a professional angler. And that's not against Jacob, because Jacob's dream is to be a professional angler. And I think what he's done this year has been absolutely exceptional. And I want to see someone like that and the storyline that he's creating continue to succeed in the elites. And while you might not like him and anglers might not like his honesty and his integrity of what he's doing, I find it refreshing to know exactly what somebody costs and their costs are to be a professional angler because no one's ever done it. And quite honestly, Jacob is doing it at the bare minimum too. I mean, he'll go five or six days and only spend 100 or $200 in food. And I don't know how that's possible. But what he's doing is something we should commend and we should get behind and show the love to him and his channel and him as an elite angler instead of throwing him down and pushing him down and kicking him while he's down. It is a tough industry to be in as a professional angler because you, like I said, you don't just have to go out there and catch fish. You have to become a superstar. And there's a lot of superstars that can't catch fish. You have to be able to do both. It's something that is hard to do because a lot of people don't like to be in front of a camera or want to be on YouTube or Instagram. I'm one of them. I enjoy bass fishing to another level. This is what I love to, to research and to know as much as possible, including messing up people's names. But what do you think of Jacob? Do you really appreciate what he's done this year? Do you like his honesty and his integrity? Tell me in the comments below. I really do appreciate you guys. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. Thank you again for everyone commenting and being part of the team. I really, really appreciate it. Tight lines and cheers. See you.